Look, there's lots riding on that game. It's the title race. It's the race for the, the top four. First mm. of all, though, what did you make of it as a 90 minutes? Uh, it was brilliant. Brilliant for Arsenal in the first 45 minutes. Um, and you knew that Liverpool are going to step it up in the, in the second half. It was, it was a little bit slow from them. They weren't breaking the lines as like they did, like they normally do. Um, but Arsenal defended well and they have to get credit for how they defended. But you knew that Liverpool are, are going to, to get better. And, and when we saw the second half, just a couple of instances, especially offside goal, they just weren't tight enough and you could see where it was coming. And once you got the first goal, it was almost like Arsenal. They didn't give up, but it just felt like, oh, they've, they've broken us here. Yeah, you saw Liverpool come out early for the, mm. the second half. Yeah, that half was quite, that's that always game. a signal. <laughs> <laughs> You're scared when you see that and waiting for you. And they it fast. You can yeah. see the, the effect of yeah. that. And those goals scored in a, in a seven-minute period in the, in the second half. Well, what do you think the difference was? The cutting edge, for me, the cutting edge up front. I think um, Arsenal played well over the course of 90 minutes. You know Liverpool are always going to get a certain amount of chances, but they only need one or two. And the chances are with the, the attacking players they have, like Jota, Salah, Diaz, who's just slotted straight into the Premier League, like he's been here all of his life. They get that chance, they will take it. And that's what they did. Mm. But other than that, and then Arsenal kind of, kind of a little bit went in their shell after that. But overall, I thought it was fantastic. Mm. But li I wanted Matt Liverpool to lose, obviously. I'm <laughs> but, yeah, it's nothing to be expected but that, really. Yeah, but it was just a really interesting game. It was really exciting. Do we think we just kind of saw where both sides are at? 100%. I think with Arsenal, they've been in really good form, but they've known their record against those top teams mm. hasn't been the best. They've come so far from the beginning of the season after those three losses, right? And you're thinking, this is our chance to prove ourselves. But like you said, Sean, that individual quality by certain players is the difference. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why Arteta probably looked really angry, even though the fans would be really impressed by what they, they'd seen. He knows that that is where we need to be. That is where we're trying to be. Liverpool are on this journey, but mm. we want to be like that. And we have to keep working. And he probably thinks as well, with Chelsea coming up, I can't have a repeat of that performance. We have to get it right against the big teams. The thing with it is as well, though, uh, Miawa, is, is that when you look at what he's put in place, everything he's changed around the culture of the club, the way he wants us to play and that, I think that when you listen to his interview afterwards and he says the boxes, both boxes, he knows that, you know, the journey with Arsenal on, they're, they're maybe three, four years away from it in what he's going to try and build to be able to properly challenge Liverpool, who are, let's face it, one of the best teams in the world. You know, people are talking about the quadruple and stuff like that. They're very much on their journey. He was disappointed simply because he knows that we haven't quite, like Sean said, we've got the, the finishing ability up the top end to take advantage of a team like Liverpool who started like they did in the first half and then try and put them on the back foot by taking a half chance with better movement, better final ball. And that is why he's probably disappointed because he's just anxious to get to a place where he wants to be. Well, we'll come on to Arsenal in a bit more detail mm. in a second because we're going to look at uh, Brighton against Tottenham mm -hmm. as well. So we'll, we'll talk about the top four and, and the balance there. First of all, we've got a big title race on our hands. Yeah. With nine games to go, there's only one point between these, these two sides. Liverpool have now won nine games in a row. And over the last 10, they've kept seven clean Please. sheets. Much as there's the emphasis on, on Liverpool's attacking players, there's been really solid defensive performances in it's that It's been very well. solid and I don't care, I don't care what Sean says, they, <laughs> they, must be, they must be frightened. They have to be. Simply, not, not because of um, the fact that Palace held them the other day, but what you see with Liverpool is that their bench especially that, and the, the, the players they've got up front will score. You know, I think that if, 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 uh, if Liverpool play that Palace team with the chances that Man City made, because they didn't do much wrong in that game. No. They just didn't finish it. And that is where I think the difference is, is that between those guys, whether it's Jota, Luis, Salah, Mane, you know what I mean? All of those guys, Firmino coming off the bench, you know, it's, they, they will get the job done. So for them to be so close now, one point going into it. We know that if City win all their games, they win the league. If, if Liverpool can win all their games and City slip up, then it's Liverpool's uh, th then time to hold the pressure. But I just think the goal scoring element of Liverpool is what's going to do this. And, and what you saw over the, those games and the results that, that they've just had, are they weren't all commanding performances. Mm -hmm. Some of them were a bit nip and tuck going into the, yeah. the end of those games. But they, as you say, managed to get it done. And this is what they've got coming up over the, over the coming weeks. I mean, they, obviously, the one we're, we're going to be looking forward to is the one that, for now, is slated for yeah. April, April the 10th, which is going to be Manchester City against Liverpool. But in there, is there much to choose between the, the remaining fixtures, do you think? No, for me, not mm -hmm. definitely. I think 
there's potential banana skins or slip ups or points losses in both sides of that. And I think it's pretty much to like what my dad said that it's who's got that cutting edge and who can get the job done. And I think City lacked that against Crystal Palace. They made enough chances to put the game to bed in a way and they, they didn't do that. And they dropped the two points because of it. Whereas Liverpool games against Brian, I didn't think they were that good, but they come away with a comfortable win. And the same at Arsenal, they come away with another comfortable win even though the game wasn't comfortable. And that's just because they have that cutting edge up the top. In terms of how Manchester City are feeling right now, look, they are elite and they are elite mentally as well as they are, they are physically. But having had that 14-point gap at one stage this season, and I know it was skewed by games in hands mm. because <laughs> this season has been patchy in terms of when games could be played. But to close that to, to one point, knowing that game after next is going to be the, the matchup at, at the Etihad, do you think they, they will be feeling that a little bit? Did we see it a bit from Bernardo Silva after the draw in midweek where it was like, it was almost a, not quite to the extent of, mm. but almost a like Kevin Keegan kind of, well, they've got to do this and they've got yeah, to play yeah, here. And there was, there was just, yeah. just an element of, of not nerves, but being affected. To close that to, to one point, knowing that game after next is going to be the, the matchup at, at the Etihad, do you think they, they will be feeling that a little bit? Did we see it a bit from Bernardo week where it was like, it was almost a, not quite to the extent of, mm. but almost a like Kevin Keegan kind of, well, they've got to do this and they've got yeah, to play yeah, here. And there was, there was just, yeah. just an element of, of not nerves, but being affected. Just, yeah. just an element of, of not nerves, but being affected. We're getting down to the point where, to the, to the, point of the season where every little thing counts in what you're doing like like my y'all rightly said it's just like for them to even just be walking around just showing yeah we're calm we know we're ready for this you know they probably would yeah, before that game they probably think to yourself if we do what we do as well as Arsenal playing at the moment we will beat them you know whatever happens for me and whatever's going to happen the reason why I feel that like Liverpool are in the driving seat is because again they will score. They, they'll, they'll finish that off. And as much as we know that City can do what they've done against Palace and hopefully score, this is why at some say Sterling's got to get back on the pitch for me. He has to get on the pitch. Or even Gundogan, what he's, what he's doing at the moment, they don't seem to be able to get on there because they're going to need to start winning like Liverpool have won in those games like we mentioned, like Brighton and games like that where they got it done because this is the part of the season where you just have to get it done. It's not about oh, pretty football, great football. It's about winning and getting it done. And Liverpool seem to be in that place But that's now. why it's so interesting to watch the managers because it feels like with, with Manchester City and Pep Guardiola, it's pressure making diamonds. It feels like it's, it's intense. Whereas Klopp says... It's not pressure, it's opportunity. And mm. it feels like there's a, there's a space you there. Have and they have, but they have the right players. They, they bring in players and, and who, and remember, who appreciate the manager's mentality. Exactly, Kels. And what you, it's a time as well where you are looking at your manager and seeing how he is. Because if you see any kind of weakness in, like, because you, you see, they'll see Pep every day. They'll see Klopp every day. They know exactly what he's about. You read his signs, you see what he's about. If the players see Pep do something on the television after the broadcast, where they go, whoa, he, he's, he's worried. They will be worried. So whatever's happening and the way he is, he cannot change his demeanor. Same with Klopp, got to remain calm and cool like the way they were walking around London because the, the, it's such an intense moment now with, with both of the teams that anything will be taken as weakness. And the manager has to be the one that doesn't give that to the players. And like you said, the, the depth of the squad is, is going to be a huge factor here. You've got Diogo Jota who can score and then get taken get off for the off. very next second. <laughs> but what did you make of the finish? No, the finish was one that um, I'm sure Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Ramsdale will be disappointed with it. But this is where, when you looked at Thiago Silva there, you're thinking, oh, no problem. You cannot give them that much time. Once he's got in here, he actually said last, last night, when he looked up there, he saw a little gap. And like, the thing is, is the accuracy of what he's done there. Great run from Mane, taking Ben White away. It gives him just that half a yard. And then he sees it there. And then he's just gone for power. This and is where you this, really see how yeah, small that gap is. Right, look at that. That's, that's like Exocet, you know, in respect of accuracy. And unfortunately for Aaron Ramsdale, he's been magnificent. He'll probably be disappointed with that. But it's, it's elite finishing because any goalkeeper was probably thinking it's going to go across me. So you're half thinking to set myself for that. Does and he so, think he's got it covered at his near post? I think? think he might think he's got it covered because the gap is so small and you have to, to, to get it in there, you have to be really accurate. And obviously what we saw is that he is. But then 
he's, he's the way he's, he's gone down for it. He, he's just you can see he's, for, uh, he's got me. Even when he got his arms, he got he, 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 he got me because of the accuracy. Look at it here. Look, he's just stuck, jumped up there, so he's not set, and now what? it's past him. You know, so you just see the two feet just off the ground there. And that is sometimes enough because maybe if his feet was on the ground, he might have been able to. If you, if you look at it, when he's behind the goal there, Kels, it's what the goalkeepers, you watch it when, if they show it again. When, just as he's going to shoot, his both feet are off the ground, so he's, he's not rooted. If he was rooted, he'd probably watch his feet come off the ground there. See it? So now he's stepped, but it's, now it's too late. So if his feet were down, he would have been able to get down there. And that is what the goalkeepers work on. And the accuracy of the strike has caught him out, really. I, I appreciate even the thought of taking the strike because we talk about both teams' win streaks, right? And I think with the Premier League, a lot of the Premier League is fair. Like, before you go into the game, well, this team's been winning for nine games. Mm. No, going into this game, they knew that Jota's record against Arsenal was impeccable. <laughs> oh, no. So when you're in the situation like it's that, he goes through. Seven and seven now, isn't seven it? and seven. And he goes through and he's thinking... I know they. I know they had enough of me. I'm just going to let it go. Yeah. He knows that he's bringing fair into these guys, and it's no shame. It's, it's when you see a strike like that, there's no angle there, and mm. he takes it and he scores. So I appreciate him actually acting upon the fair he's put in them. Wow. Yeah, but that's why. That's what I think is the actual difference between, say, City's attackers and Liverpool's attackers. City's attackers would have tried to cut it cut back across. or tried to pass to somebody or chop and go back around the outside where it's Liverpool, if they see the chance or a window to either shoot or cause the opposite team a problem, they're not interested in slow build-up back around. They go for the jugular mm -hmm. and more times than none, they end up scoring from it. Yeah, the only, the only thing I would say is only five in terms of goal difference. I think City are on 50 and Liverpool are on 55, both of which are extraordinary anyway. Mm -hmm. but, but while City, as, you, as you're saying, might not have that instinctive goal scorer, then it, it, they're still managing, to, still managing to score plenty. But the, the second goal that Liverpool scored in this one, completely different scenario and all about Firmino's movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, yeah, I've, I've, I've always loved Firmino as, as a player in general. I always thought that he, he's such a pivotal part to the way Mane and Salah have been over the last five years. And he started it. And all he does is does what you're taught as a kid. He, you're taught to keep on the move when you're in the box because Don Juan can pick up your position then. And he does about two yes, circles. Andy Robertson as well. And it's the step back. He, he, he like takes two mm -hmm. step backs and... He, the defender has to come with him because if he doesn't come with him, then the ball gets to him. Mm. Once he steps this way, it gives him enough yardage to then go forward and he can get enough touch on the ball. Look, he's, he's gone now. Gabriel's out of the game. Really cool. he, that was just elite because Gabriel, is, it's the way he actually, he done so much in just a fraction of space there, Kels, a little bit of space there, is what, is what, that's what the difference is. Because firstly, he points. So Gabriel thinks, OK, he wants to go in there, so I've got to stop him. So by the time he points and comes back this way, Gabriel's like this. He's got his arm there. He's thinking, OK. And then by the time Gabriel goes like that, he's gone. Yeah. And that is what you need in the box. That it, you watch, is, watch he, it is that something he's been taught or Absolute, is that a feel for it? It's a feel. You, you know, because he knows where he wants the space. He's not going to kill the space, Kells. So watch what happens now. So he's pointing. That's where he wants the space. Steps back now. Gabriel, look. Bam. That is how you get the space. And then the that finish is amazing. Exquisite. That is elite finishing. That is elite movement in the box. And those are the differences between that level of player and Arsenal's in respect of the movement that we were making in the first half. Which someone like Lacazette's movement, he, he had a similar opportunity in the first half. He didn't make any of that kind of movement because when you get in there, you have to make that happen because the defender wants to block that place. He wants to block that, but you need it. So how are you going to get it if you don't do something first? You have to do something to earn it. And that's what Firmino done magnificently. For Arsenal, is the closest player on the pitch to that Martinelli? In respect of... Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say Martinelli's movement um, down the centre is, that, is there yet. Is that yet? Because that's something that, over the years, it's, it's, it's just... It's brilliant, you know. Martinelli's more on that wing, taking on. He's more, you know, d direct and intensified runs and take people on. I thought he gave Trent a real chase in for a bit. Um, but that's the player that Arsenal do need, that clever player, because the way they played in the first half, Kells, if you get that movement, when you because you, you, you get past Trent, you get past maybe Andy Robinson, you get it in, you need somebody who's got that clever movement so you can get the goal, you get that chance where you then back foot instead of them feeling comfortable um, going in at half time then they come and say right let's step it up they're under pressure because they know you've got an half chance taker of chances 
it doesn't it didn't happen and so Liverpool were okay. It yeah, also it also helps like for a winger. So like I was a winger, if my attacker didn't move, you end up just hitting the basic standard areas, which are back post, near post, penalty spot. Whereas if there's that little bit of movement, you can actually try and pick that person out, mm. which basically what Liverpool did there. He, he, he created a space, like Dad said, and he, he knew where he was going to be. And then it's, it's tapping for him, really. Mm. Yeah, and then it's easier for whoever's crossing the ball to, to, try and, to try and find him. Although Martinelli had a great chance of, of his own as well in, in the game. And then it fell to, to Odegaard in the end. Yes, but like um, this, this one here was, um, went through to Lacazette. It's a poor play from Thiago. But like once this comes to him here, Sean, you know what I mean? He's, he's blasting it. I think the goalkeeper does very well. I don't think his mind's made up what he wants to do, Erdegaard, because once this comes back, get it out your feet, bam, whip it round the side there. It just feels like, look at him, look, his head's down, he's not looking, he doesn't see, he's just gone for pure power. Yeah, I don't think he knew the goalie was there. Mm. Like, I think once he's taken the ball inside, he just thinks he's got the open goal with two players. So that's the only reason why I can think he's gone with power, because I think if he lifts his head up and he sees there's a goalkeeper, a player and Trent on the line, he will most probably try to whip it or even chop back. Because if it was Ozil, we all know what he, he loved the chop. Mm. And th when it comes back to Odegaard, hey, chop now, and then he's got that side, or you whip it around yeah. to the far post sort of thing. That's, I wouldn't say I would have done that because <laughs> I don't really like my left foot that much. <laughs> but you see, again, you see with that is that um, when you get to that, that area in, in the goal, the goalkeeper has to totally commit himself. Mm. So like Sean's saying about chopping, with Erdegaard, he's not looking. He actually, he actually doesn't even see, um, when you look at it, he doesn't even see that Alisson is there. Alisson's goalkeeping in this instant was brilliant because he's kept his eye on the ball, he's not committed himself at any stage, and that is why you see him t totally off the ground when, er when, when Erdegaard's getting ready to hit that. So if he chops there, goalkeeper's gone, and he could probably slot it down there. That's just composure. I it's think part of that is the situation, though, because if you look at where Arsenal are, where Arsenal want to be, it's getting those chances against the Liverpool side, golden opportunities. Yeah. And not a state of panic, but it's like, oh my gosh, it's here. Yes. You're just thinking, let me just get on target. But that little bit of quality, like I said with the Firmino run, right? Mm. A little bit of quality to do something so small to give yourself that little bit of time to pick the right decision is mm. what makes it. Absolutely. Like I said, if he chops it there, goalkeeper goes one way, you slay it home. We saw Salah do it a few weeks ago against Norwich. The most delicate chop, mm. just to open up the goal a bit and then you can slay it away. So it was a really unfortunate chance because mm. if they score that goal, what a game we have yeah. on our hands. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really interesting with Arsenal because we're comparing them to the, the teams that are going to be going for the title this season, whereas really, in terms of Champions League qualification, which, which will have been their aim, mm. they are really comfortable there. And OK, they haven't taken a point off the, the top three all season. They haven't won against any of the, the top five. But what they are doing is making sure of being, being excellent at the level that they're at. Mm. 100%. If you, Arsenal's seasons this season, the journey is just, it's crazy. That's, it's almost like two seasons in one. It was such a really, really tough start. Everyone spoke about what they said. And Arteta has been given time. He said what he wants to do. And we've seen it come to life over this massive period. People had question marks about Aubameyang leaving, but you've seen what it's done for the squad and what he's enabled them to do. And he's got a lot of young, young players. And one thing we know about young players is their form's going to be great sometimes, mm -hmm. their form may not be great. But he's coached them really well and you can see their position in the table. They are where they deserve to be. As ever, you're always going to look forward and say, that's where you want to be, that's what mm -hmm. you want to work towards. And it's not going to happen overnight that they're going to sit with the big boys at the top of the table. But in these moments, they want to give the best account of themselves so they know, yeah. listen, we're closer, we know how close mm -hmm. we are. I think games like that just show them that we are a bit far away, we are missing that little bit of quality, but we know that at least we can go blow to blow for a certain amount yeah. of time. Yeah. If that goal goes in, and let's say that game ended 1-1, they'll walk away from that saying, the story of our season was we, we dropped so many points, but we managed to get a really vital point here. Mm -hmm. We can do this. It's about making sure we can do it over a consistent basis mm -hmm. now. And that's why that, that game, whenever that Chelsea game comes, is going to be really interesting because mm -hmm. it's another example. Top four may be in the bag, but can we get closer to third? Can we really, at the end of the season, say, we are that, we're just mm -hmm. that bit off? So credit to them because, I mean, not many teams will have the mentality to turn it around like they did. No, exactly. And also the fact that 
they're young and, and they're relatively inexperienced, yeah. not just individually, but as a group as well. They're, they're not youngest as used the, to working with yeah. each other as, as the teams above them. Yeah, youngest in the league. Mm. And, you know, I suppose with that comes impatience for what you're doing. And then what else comes with and that? And still effective. Exactly. With that, you know, exactly. the goal involvements for 21 and under, they're, it, they're up they're, there. They're, yeah. they're way up there. And what you're hoping and what I think Mikel is doing very well is managing the expectation because then... What happens with an Arsenal is that Arsenal get amongst the top four now and then people are starting to talk about Arsenal, like, oh, they're back or this and that. But remember how young the team is, what he's trying to achieve with this team and the fact that we cannot be in a hurry for this to happen because there's still loads more pieces to be bolted onto what's going on. You can understand Mikel's, he was upset, his frustration with last night because it is Liverpool and it is a good like marker to set yourself, okay, first half, brilliant. The same with City, when we played against City, is a great marker for the team to say, okay, we're getting closer. But I would take a lot from that game, from the first half, because like I say, Liverpool for me are the best, um, and the way they are, I think they're, the, they're in the best position at the moment, mentally. And Arsenal have to say to themselves and take from that game that they are progressing. And people mustn't be in too much of a, of a rush. And I think I, the Arsenal fan base are a little bit, they're kind of pleased at the moment. But what they, they were want delighted to see, at the final whistle. Absolutely yeah, I delighted. Mean, obviously not yeah. with the result, but they yeah. saw what, from their team what they, what, what, almost exactly, what they want. Exactly, Kels. And then, and then now it's going to be interesting, <coughs> excuse me, to see the, the approach for Villa because that is where all of our thoughts are going to now. And we, we want to win that game. So we just got to take the positives out of this one. What about the point that Mayo, Mayo made about getting closer to Chelsea to show that, look, it's not about catching up with mm. City and Liverpool at the top. It's, a great point. it's about the next step. It's a great point because obviously everyone's, they're chasing fourth. You're chasing fourth because you want it. But if you can win a few games, the games that Arsenal have been winning, is, it, it can push them up there. And when you look at the, the, the games that Arsenal have left, they've got a great chance of beating a, a few of those teams. So you should be chasing Chelsea. You shouldn't be just trying to hold these Problem lot off. Problem is Chelsea are also on excellent form exactly, as well yeah. at the moment. You shouldn't be trying to just chase, like, hold those off. You should be trying to get hold of Chelsea's coattails because then that, push, that pulls you away from the, the people are chasing the fourth. So fingers crossed that that can happen, but I just hope they don't get their, their, their heads don't drop in this moment. No, and what the result last night means that the title race is very much on between Manchester City and Liverpool, just a point between them, and now they've played the same number of of games. Arsenal really well placed in terms of fourth, particularly because they've got those games in hand. Uh, but Tottenham made sure that they're keeping themselves in the conversation with a 2-0 win.